Welcome ladies and gentlemen, my name is Diane Chronicles here on this Destiny 2 video and today we're going to be taking a look at the Destiny 2 weekly reset for June 22nd, 2021. And there are a bunch of different things that are going on this week that are very specific to this week. First of all, the Grandmaster Nightfalls have released this week. It is much earlier than it was in previous seasons. Usually it was like the last three or four weeks of the season. And this one we have like 65 or 64 more days of the season. And of course, the Grandmaster Nightfall is the pinnacle of PvE activities. It is the hardest that you can possibly play in Destiny 2. Now, it's not impossible, but it is much harder than that of Masters. So if you haven't tried it already, you know Masters and stuff, I would recommend giving it a try, looking up some videos, because it is something different. And along with that, obviously, there's going to be the Adept Weapons, which, in my opinion, this season is not really that worth it, but you can get them if you want. Other than that, there's increased Infamy this week, so if you wanted to get Infamy from Gambit for whatever reason, it's available this week. And finally, if you look at the calendar, you can see that we also have a new weekly Pinnacle mission, which is just going to be probably the new Expunge. So just get on whatever character you finish uh, Splicer 6 on, and you'll probably see Splicer 7. Moving on, let's go ahead and get started. First up for the Nightfall, this week we have the Glassway, which is probably the worst or the hardest Grandmaster Nightfall you could possibly have. And I would recommend that you either wait or be very careful. If you're looking to get 100k, obviously I do recommend Legend. It's one of those longer but also higher density missions. So it it's very small chance that Hero will work. But I think Legend is probably going to be the best choice. And uh, I believe last week was a Sniper. So this week should be the Fusion Rifle. The Vanguard Strike playlist burn this week is going to be Arxen. The Rotating Crucible playlist is going to be Showdown. Moving on to the Europa stuff, first up for the Empire Hunt, we have the Warrior. Fairly easy mission, especially when compared to the Technocrat. For the simulation, we have Agility. This is going to be the one that's inside and outside with the cubes. For the Deepstone Crypt Raid Challenge, this week we have the Core 4. This is going to be taking place in the boss encounter of the raid, and in this encounter, whenever you break off the cores off the boss, you have to destroy all four at the same time before picking up any nukes. This is the way most people do it, as it is faster. Moving on to the Moon stuff. First up, the Nightmare Hunts. We have things like Skolas, we have Zydron, and we have Omnigal. Zydron definitely being the easiest. With the Garden of Salvation Raid Challenge, we have A Link to the Chain, taking place in the second encounter of the raid, and in this encounter, anytime you link up to a relay, everybody has to be linked up to some relay at approximately the same time. It doesn't have to be the same relay, but it has to be around the same time. For the Vaults of Glass Challenge, we have only Oracle for you. Now, we don't actually know what this is, or at least I don't, because it's the first time this challenge has ever appeared, and we're imagining it's in the second major encounter of the raid, and I'm not counting that first part with the plates. I'm going to take a guess here, and I'm going to guess that it's either that you can only shoot one oracle, therefore everybody has to shoot their own oracle, which I guess doesn't make sense because there are six people and seven oracles, or only one person can shoot all of the oracles, which would be quite difficult. Moving on to the seasonal challenges, just going to show you off the different seasonal challenges available. So it took a minute to read over some of these different options. In summary, first of all, this one's going to be the Splicer 7 one, just like every single other week. This one's going to be the new expunged sticks in nine minutes or less, collecting ether in the main playlists, getting the machine gun kills in expunge or override, infamy rank and gamut. This is an eight times large XP, crucible competitive playlist, and finally Grandmaster Nightfall Strike completion, which is another eight times large XP. Moving on to the gunsmith's possible weapon options. If you didn't know, every single week he brings a bunch of different weapon options with very specific roles that may be really amazing that you can get very cheaply. For the most part, there's not a lot of great ones here. Some of them are kind of middling to above average. First up, the False Promises has overflows and moment with some pretty decent stats and stuff here, but 360 is not doing that well. Toil and Trouble, actually a pretty good role, though I would like to see Full Choke in this column, and for the most part, Toil and Trouble doesn't have great stats compared to other aggressive frames. Ikella Sniper Rifle, Triple Tap, Quick Shot, not really that great anymore. True Teller is going to be that Blinding Nades, Auto Loading, which is okay if you like Blinding Nades, but I still personally prefer doing Spike Grenades. The Seven Sarah Saw, probably going to be the most alluring option, because it is a Warmind Cell making item, and it does have a decent role, although again, could be better. And then finally, Memory Interdict, Spike grenades, chain reaction, kind of fun, but underdog, kind of lame. Moving on to Ever versus Inventory. Oh, boy! Moving on to Ever versus Inventory to shop for different items available for Bright Dust. Uh, first up, across the bottom we here, we have this uh, sparrow if you want it. Actually, the little arms move out the front. That's adorable. But more importantly, we have the Cloud Strike is a Nagi's Automant. It's only $12.50. Uh, usually, I would imagine these are like $3,000, but... 
You know, uh, to make my thing look like a Buster Cloud Sword, it's pretty nice. We got a ghost projection that looks like a hat if you want to be a cowboy. We got the gray grayscale undergrowth, which looks like this. Moving on to the other bright dust section, first of all, for the ghost shell, we have the, I want to say, like, Minecraft-looking ghost shell, if you want to get it. We have this, I'm not going to read that, we're going to, we have this sparrow, which is very wide, interesting, and uh, otherwise kind of standard. We have the ship that looks like this, which is very similar to, this is the medic ship, actually, very similar to the... Uh, Crota something, Crota's Bane ship. We also have a chest ornament. Again, I'm on my hunter right now, so I see the hunter one. This is going to be for the Isphidia Spathe, which apparently does not want to load, but obviously this exotic's not very good. If you're on a different class, you'll see a different armor. All right, here we go. Yes, all right. So this is what the Queen Cobra looks like, and then, of course, the fancy hat roll, which is just kind of rolling a hat in your hand. Very nice. Do you like that? Uh, we also have an ornament for the hard light. One of my favorite ornaments for the hard light. Does definitely looks pretty nice. We have a transmit effect. We come in as a harpy. Harpy. A harpy. We have the cabal entrance. We have the minotaur entrance. We have the vex invasion entrance. Lots of different entrances. Circadian shield looks kind of cool on certain weapons. Not a big fan for the armor side of things. Uh, Melchizedek bramble, which I don't know how else you'd say this other than. Mel cheesy dick bramble can look pretty nice on certain weapons. I don't think this is the best example, but actually does have some pretty nice applications. I think uh, Titan armor actually looks pretty good as well. Molten bronze, if you want to look like this, and then finally we have the Vanguard Magnus Gloss, one of the first Vanguard shaders in the game. And finally, for Hawthorne's weekly raid challenge for the Last Wish raid challenge, we have Summoning Ritual. This is going to be taking place in the first encounter of the raid with Kali, and in this encounter, all you have to do is activate all nine plates instead of just the correct six ones, and that's it. Just do that every time you have the option and that is gonna be pretty much the end of the video make sure you come check out my live streams right after this video as well as all the times on screen right now twitch.tv slash tech link in the description down below oftentimes we have big open lobbies for pinnacles for the new seasonal stuff and vaults of glass even if you've never done it we often accept lots of people and help them through and of course a big thank you to my patrons on patreon for helping me make videos like this specifically i want to give a big thank you to medi would i'm dead dr strange joe smith monday steve bachmas raymond shonen you panther cole sherman casey reagan for the support on patreon and uh, that's it. Hope you guys did enjoy. My name is Nick and I'll see you guys on the next one.